I'm online's Francesca Evans with your weekly bulletin bringing you the latest news, sport, what's on this weekend and the weather forecast for Lyme Regis. A scheme to protect the future of the historic cob in Lyme Regis has moved a step forward thanks to a £2.5 million investment from the Environment Agency. The agency is pledging the majority of funding for phase five of the long-term environmental improvement strategy in Lyme Regis, which started in the early 1990s. Structural investigations have shown significant signs of seafloor erosion at the Grade 1 listed cob, Lyme's most famous landmark, and an important breakwater protecting the harbour and hundreds of homes and businesses. The erosion is so significant that without intervention, the cob would no longer work as a breakwater by 2044. Dorset Council is now planning to construct a sheet pile and concrete tow wall and a tension pile to anchor the harbour walls. Work is scheduled to start in summer 2024 when the sea and climate is generally calmer and is expected to finish the following year. It is not yet known how much public access to the cob will be available during this time. A Lyme Regis man was arrested on suspicion of possession of Class A drugs after two warrants were executed by police last week. The 28-year-old man was arrested at a property in the Queen's Walk area following a police search and was issued with a conditional caution. The arrest came as Dorset Police say they are continuing to crack down on drug crime in the area and County Lines activity, which sees illegal drugs transported from one area to another. West Dorset Police Sergeant Mike Brown said officers were committed to tackling issues in the local area that they knew caused concern for residents and would continue to relentlessly target those believed to be supplying drugs. His comments came following increased complaints in Lyme Regis over antisocial behaviour and drug-related crime, particularly on the main residential estate, where residents have said their concerns have not been taken seriously enough by the police or Wagner Housing Association. Officers investigating a report of burglary at a jewellery store in Lyme Regis are appealing for more information. A break-in took place at the jewellery by Lucy Campbell shop at the Town Mill sometime between 1.40 and 2.45am on Tuesday, September 13th, and a large number of handmade jewellery items were stolen. Following inquiries, a 59-year-old man of no fixed abode was arrested on suspicion of burglary and released on police bail as officers continue with their investigation. Police have now released an image of some of the stolen items, asking anyone who comes across these or similar items being offered for sale to contact police on 101, quoting the crime reference now shown on screen. Baroness Jenny Jones, one of only two peers representing the Green Party in the House of Lords, has given her backing to Lyme Regis and Charmouth volunteers campaigning to improve local water quality. Baroness Jones recently visited Lyme Regis to meet with Green Party Dorset Councillor Belinda Borden and environmental campaigners who have been regularly testing the quality of the rivers Lim and Char. They have been calling for South West Water to stop sewage overflows into the rivers and for the Environment Agency to test the quality of bathing water at Lyme Regis out of the main summer season. Councillor Borden told Baroness Jones how the water quality could affect tourism in Lyme Regis. Belinda, do you mind telling me exactly what the sewage discharges mean here for Lyme Regis? Well, it's, um, it's really serious for our tourism. We've um, recently set up a, a river monitoring group with our local campaigning group, Turn Lime Green, um, and we've also got people here from the Charmouth um, River Monitors, so we can talk about that later. But um, the, the, the raw sewage coming into our little, tiny little river is, is incredibly serious. We've been having meetings with South West Water and with the Environment Agency and, and they are examining it and getting trying to get to the bottom of it but it's still completely unacceptable. Um, the, the beach here is badly affected. Um, the swimmers uh, are reporting problems in the other areas of the beach and um, this beach has not been designated as a bathing beach for some years now so we're campaigning to have it redesignated so that it can be monitored um, and we think that Lyme Regis is one of the Lyme Regis and Charmouth is one of the only coastal areas across the Jurassic Coast where we do not have blue flag status. And this could be part of the reason that it's not being monitored, or that there are problems. Um, and obviously, from in, from point of view of sustainable tourism, it's it's obviously ridiculous, not only for locals but for visitors. When you say this. Lyme Regis first team players will be left kicking their heels tomorrow for the third Saturday in a month. 
All local football was postponed as a sign of respect after the death of the Queen, and the Seasiders also had a free Saturday afternoon when Dawlish United pulled out at the last minute, saying they could not raise a side, despite their reserves team fielding a full 11 against Upline. Tomorrow, Lyme should be travelling to Devon and Exeter Premier leaders Crediton United, but the fixture has been postponed with no replacement offered as Devon FA have switched the dates of their County Cup games, which take priority. This is particularly disappointing for Julian Simia's squad after they played so well last week in a 6-1 victory over Ottery St Mary Seconds, with man of the match Fred Parsons and Cam Fowler both scoring two goals each. Lyme Reserves lost 2-0 to Hemiok at the day before last Saturday in Division 3 and tomorrow they're at home to Exeter University 5th 11 who will be playing their first game of the season. Upline Firsts won their first game of the season 7-0 against Cheriton Fitzpain in Division 4 with a brilliant hat-trick from Marcus Simmons whilst Charmouth Firsts went down 3-1 at home to South Petherton. Another brilliant season was recently celebrated by Upline and Lyme Ridges cricketers at their annual presentation night at the Talbot Arms. As well as finishing in third place in Devon League C Division East after promotion last season, Upline got to the finals of both the T20 Corinthian Cup and the East Devon Bash T20 final. Principal award of the night went to Indian overseas player Abhishek Anand, who scored 700 runs during the season, the highest total in the division. Abby has now returned to India, but is hoping to come back next season. Yachtsmen from all over the country descended on Lyme Regis last week to compete in the Phantom Class National Championships hosted by Lyme Regis Sailing Club. Local sailors competed well, but failed to string together a series of results to challenge the top of the leaderboard, occupied by some of the UK's top sailors. Next year, Lyme Regis Sailing Club will be hosting the OK World Championships in June. And finally, some good news for local skittlers. The local league returns next week after a break of two years due to COVID-19, with 16 teams competing for the various trophies. But Lyme Regis sides have been left without a home alley following the recent closure of the ship in. The town will be celebrating Oktoberfest this weekend with Lyme Regis Brewery and the Millside teaming up to host a weekend of live music, food and drink. The programme gets underway today at the Town Mill from 5pm and on Saturday from 3pm. The Marine Theatre will be hosting its monthly comedy club tonight with doors opening at 7, followed by the first guest speakers for Shoot Festival, this year being held in line, starting tomorrow. In Charmer, the local History Society will be giving a talk and holding its annual general meeting at the Village Hall tonight at 7pm and the Village will be hosting an Environment Day with a variety of activities on offer on Saturday. The Nags Head and Lime Regis will be hosting its weekly live music on Saturday night from 9pm. There's a definite autumn nip in the air and the weather is set to worsen throughout the day today with strong winds and heavy rain forecast this afternoon and well into the evening. Saturday is looking a little brighter with cloud and sunny spells but more rain forecast from early morning Sunday and throughout most of the day. Temperatures are set to reach highs of 18 degrees. Thanks for watching Lime Online's video news bulletins. You can stay up to date with all the latest local news throughout the week on the Lime Online website or follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for regular updates. Have a great weekend.